If you're starting AP Calculus, you're diving into limits. And here's the thing, limits are the secret weapon for everything that comes next. Derivatives, they come from limits. Integrals, limits again. But when your teacher says a limit is the value a function approaches, honestly, that doesn't mean much yet. So let's crack this open and see why limits actually matter. So what actually is a limit? Well, imagine that you're driving toward a stop sign. You're not there yet, but you're getting closer and closer. The limit is that stop sign. So if we think about the limit as a question, the limit asks, where are we heading? Not necessarily, where do we land? Basically, finding a limit is like finding the direction that we're going or what we're headed toward. If we bring this idea back to math and we actually look at a graph, the limit is the y-coordinate that we're getting close to as we get close to a certain x-coordinate. So at this point on the graph here, we can see that we're at x equals 2 and y equals 4. So if we trace along the graph toward x equals 2 from both sides of x equals 2, we see that in both directions, we're getting close to y equals 4. So even if the function isn't defined at this exact spot of x equals 2, which this function is not because of that hole, both sides of the graph are moving toward the same height, which is 4, which means 4 is the limit because 4 is the direction we're headed, even though technically this graph isn't defined at x equals 2 itself. Now let's pause for a second and talk about why limits even matter in AP Calc. Well, the reason is because they're foundational for both derivatives and integrals. And these are the two major concepts from all of calculus. Differentiation or derivatives is all about finding the slope of a function at a particular point, and integration or integrals is all about finding the area underneath the function over a certain interval. So these two things, derivatives and integrals, are the basis for all of calculus, and we define both of them using limits. Plus, the College Board loves to use limits in free response questions on the AP exam, which means that if you can understand limits, everything else in AP calculus, derivatives, integrals, continuity, is all gonna become way less intimidating. So let's talk about how to think about limit problems. The first thing we wanna do is start with the graph if we have one. When we have a graph like we did over here, our best approach for finding a limit is gonna to be to check the left and right hand limits by tracing along the graph toward the value we're approaching. So here we wanted to look for the limit at x equals two. That means we wanna trace along the graph on the left side of x equals two and trace along the graph on the right side of x equals two and see which value we're approaching from both the left and right hand sides. If we approach the same value on the left and right hand sides, that's the limit. We also wanna make sure that we're looking for discontinuities like holes, jumps, and asymptotes. This function here had a hole or what we call a point discontinuity or a removable discontinuity at x equals two. We wanna take those into account when we're trying to determine the value of the limit. But even if we don't have the graph such that we can't use these steps, we can always make a table of values if we have the function itself. For example, maybe our function is f of x equals x squared, like it is here, and we're looking for the limit as x gets close to 2. Well, we could make a table and evaluate the function at maybe 1.9 and then 1.99, which are both on the left side of x equals 2. And then on the right side of x equals 2, we could look at 2.01 or 2.1. And then based on the values that the function takes on around x equals 2, we can usually make a pretty good guess for what the value of the limit will be. Here we can see that to the left of 2, f of x takes on values that are a little less than 4. And to the right of 2, it takes on values that are a little more than 4. So with values that are a little less than 4 and a little more than 4, we can probably make a pretty good guess that the function is approaching 4 as x gets close to 2. That doesn't necessarily mean that the value of the function itself is 4. Here we had a removable discontinuity at x equals 2, so the function actually isn't defined at x equals 2 itself. But the limit was 4 because we approached 4 from both sides. So the function itself can be undefined, but we can see from the trend in the table that the limit is likely four. So the takeaway here is that we don't wanna get stuck in the weeds with notation or with making limits more complicated than they actually are. We always wanna come back to the question, what value is this function trying to get to? What value is this function getting close to? Now, that being said, let's talk common mistakes. Probably the most common mistake when it comes to limits is assuming that the value of the function at some point is always equal to the value of the limit. This graph and this table could represent the exact same scenario. If we just look at the table, it makes it look like the value of the function is actually four, but all we can determine from the table is that the limit is four. 
If we then go look at the graph, because of this hole in the graph at 2, 4, the function is actually undefined there. So for this particular curve with the removable discontinuity here and this table of values, we can say that the limit as x goes to 2 is 4, but the function's value at 2 is undefined. The function's value is not 4. So the value of the function isn't necessarily always equal to the value of the limit. Sometimes they are, but we can't assume that these things are equivalent. We also can't make the mistake of assuming that every limit exists. Sometimes we can have the case where the limit does not exist and we say DNE does not exist. This happens when the left-hand limit is different than the right-hand limit. And when that's the case, we say that there is no general limit and therefore that the general limit does not exist. Don't be afraid to say that the limit doesn't exist. This is a common scenario that we'll see in AP Calculus. So just check your limit from the left and your limit from the right. And if your graph isn't approaching the same value from the left side and the right side, then you want to conclude that there is no general limit and the limit does not exist. Going along with that, a common mistake is to ignore this left versus right approach. This is our most reliable way to look at the limit. We track what the function is doing from the left. We track what it's doing from the right. That's going to give us the best chance of finding the value of the limit or saying that it doesn't exist. We can't ignore this approach. It's extremely helpful in getting the limit right. And then the last mistake is not checking for removable and non-removable discontinuities. Like we saw in this graph here, this removable discontinuity tells us that the function is not defined at x equals 2 even though the table makes it look like it is defined. If we use the table, we see that the value of the limit is four because we're approaching four as we move in from the left and we're approaching four as we move in from the right. But if we don't check for a discontinuity, we could mistakenly think that the function is actually defined at the point two, four when it isn't. So we can't make the mistake of forgetting to check for discontinuities in the function. With all that in mind, let's look through an example. Let's say we want to find the limit using this graph as we approach x equals 2. Well, we can see x equals 2 is right here. And if we come up to the function, we can see that the function is undefined right at that value, which means if we call this function f, we can say that f of 2 is undefined. But what about the limit at 2? Well, if we track in from the left side, we can see that we're coming in here along y equals 5. And if we track from the right side, we're also coming in along y equals 5. And from both directions, the value we're approaching is 5, which means that the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, we'll just call it f of x, is going to be equal to 5. The limit is defined and its value is 5, even though the function at x equals 2 itself is undefined. And if we look at another example, from a table, this is a totally different example unrelated to the graph here, we can see in the table that we're approaching x equals 2. We're looking at the value of the function as x approaches 2. And what we see is that on the left-hand side of x equals 2, the values of the function are getting close to 3. On the right-hand side of x equals 2, the values of the function are getting close to 3. And so, because we're getting close to 3 from the left and close to 3 from the right, we're approaching the same value on the left and right hand sides, which means the limit here is equal to three. So in this problem, we can say that the limit as x goes to two of whatever this function is, f of x, is equal to three because we have the same left and right hand limits and we can therefore define a general limit. If instead these values here, instead of 3.001 and 3.01, had been maybe let's say 1.001, 0, 0, 1, and here 1.01, .01, then it would look like from the left, the function's values were getting close to 3, but from the right, the function's values were getting close to 1. In that case, the left-hand limit would have been 3, the right-hand limit would have been 1, and because those one-sided limits are not equal to each other, in this case, the limit does not exist because we're not approaching the same value from the left and right-hand sides. That's the entire idea behind limits. Don't let the notation scare you away from the big idea, which is that we want to look at these left and right hand limits using that left versus right approach to see where the function is headed, like our car was headed toward the stop sign. If we're headed in the same direction from the left and from the right, then we know that's the limit of the function. Once you see limits as this idea of where are we heading instead of some technical formal definition, the whole concept gets a lot easier. If you're ready to keep going or want to dive deeper into AP Calculus, 
The link in the description takes you to my full AP Calculus course.